Good evening, I'm Emily Flores. And I'm John Dupree. Thanks for joining us on ABC4 Nightside. We begin with a disturbing issue infecting our state, child pornography. The harsh reality is that Utah has become a place that these perpetrators like to call home. These crimes are on a rapid rise and show no signs of slowing down. ABC 4's Brittany Johnson joining us live in studio with tonight's exclusive story. Brittany. Well, Emily and John, there are a barrage of cases happening right here in Utah. And within the next few minutes, we're going to expose the truth about child pornography. We'll tell you exactly what it is and who the victims are. And once you hear this, you will wonder why most of these criminals see little to no jail time. But I do want to warn you, this story does contain disturbing details. Manicured lawns, children at play, the American dream fulfilled. It's a, that kind of stuff never happens here neighborhood. We're getting ready to serve a search warrant. It has happened. A parent's worst nightmare realized in West Jordan. We have a suspect who has been downloading child pornography and uploading it to his Dropbox account. Child pornography, arguably the most heinous crime one can commit against an innocent child. This week, we've already been out three times, and it's Wednesday. It's a crime on a rapid rise, and it's not slowing down in Utah. And the work never stops. Work never stops, unfortunately. On this night, ABC4 News is embedded with the women and men on the front lines of this unimaginable battle, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, or ICAC. All right. Yeah. Um, we'll just watch. Jessica Farnsworth is the commander, and she's leading the hunt for a suspected child porn distributor. ICAC received a tip. The suspect uploaded an enormous amount of child sexual abuse material to his Dropbox account. 6,483 photos and videos in all, all containing disturbing images of little girls forced to perform sexual acts. Task force officers take the perpetrator into custody without incident. He's taken into the mobile forensic lab. The suspect's being interviewed right now. The real investigative work is just beginning inside the perp's home. Who did this? Whose room did this come? This came from the kitchen. Special agent Sate Ally leaves no stone unturned in his search for digital evidence. I am going to pull the hard drive out of this computer tower. The agents track the suspect's digital footprint in the dark underworld of child porn. More than likely, investigators say the perp traded the disturbing content with like-minded predators across the U.S. and beyond. These people that are um, possessing and distributing child pornography, they're, they're trading it with other offenders so that those offenders will give them child pornography that they don't have. The suspect is booked on 10 counts of sexual exploitation of a minor. Can you tell me, are you sexually attracted to children, young children? Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, after 22 years in prison, you're going back for child pornography charges. Do you have anything to say about that? The ICAC agents win tonight's battle, but many in law enforcement feel like they're losing the war against child porn. That's not even the tip of the iceberg of what there is to see out there. Shelly Kudrow was the Family Justice Section Director for the Attorney General's Office. Her team screens the cases brought to them by ICAC and files criminal charges. We see bestiality. We see children being forced to perform sexual acts with animals, to perform sexual acts with adults. She sees the worst in humanity every day. Every time you see, you've seen, you think you've seen the worst, something new comes out. Um, we've seen um, a day-old baby still in the hospital, hasn't even been released from the hospital, being raped by an adult male. There are 42 mugshots on your screen right now. These are just some of the cases in Utah from January 2018 until now. All of them charged with either child pornography, sexual exploitation of a minor, enticement of a minor, or dealing harmful materials to a minor. They may do some jail time, but they will not go to prison. Despite the horrific crimes committed against the children, many offenders are given what some say is just a slap on the wrist. ABC4 News uncovered documents that seem to support this claim. Prosecutors charged Jordan Kapner with distributing and downloading child pornography 
A judge sentenced him to just 60 days in jail. Another example, Jeremy Puckett, charged with watching and distributing child porn. He served just 30 days. And then there's Peter McKee, arrested for meeting up with who he thought was a 13-year-old girl. Charging documents state he wanted to engage in sex. McKee served just 30 days in jail. It's difficult to push for stiffer child pornography sentencing when many federal judges believe sentences are too long. According to a survey by the U.S. Sentencing Commission, 71% of respondents believe the mandatory minimum for receipt of child pornography was too high. And it's not just federal judges. State Representative Jim Dunnigan of Taylorsville no recently pushed for legislation so that would have lowered the penalty for viewing and, and possessing child questions. pornography. The main reason we're here, again, is because law enforcement is worried that if this bill passes, it would have lesser penalties for no, people I, convicted no, of I child pornography. I that. No, I don't. No? Thank you. Appreciate talking okay. to you. For those on the front lines battling the child pornography problem, they will keep arresting and rearresting those who commit and perpetrate the unspeakable crimes against the innocent and vulnerable. They've been saying the whole time while they're on probation that they, they haven't offended, but 90% of them fail their exit interviews, their polygraphs. They are out there reoffending, and each time there's multiple, multiple victims. When Prosecutor Coudreau said this is the tip of the iceberg, I think uh, we all felt the same yeah. chill run down our spines. Hard to imagine how pervasive it is. And so, you know, that brings the question to the forefront for parents. How do we keep our kids safe? Well, John, you have to monitor what your kids are doing because yeah. a lot of times these perpetrators, they're finding these children online through social media, video games, yeah. uh, chat rooms. Another thing is, though, for children ages zero to five, the perpetrators are more than likely right there in the home is someone that the family knows or a family member. Um, so you do have to watch out for that. Another thing is, a lot of times you don't want to think this, but it can be your pastor, people in the church, your soccer coach, people you would least expect that have the most access to your kids and that you trust the most. So. I know we have so much more. We'll get into that tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Part okay. two does run tomorrow, and we'll dig into that a lot more. Hard to watch and tough to take, but we need <laughs> this information. We do. Thanks for giving us a look inside something that we don't want to look at but need to. Brittany Johnson reporting. Thank you.